Hi there, Sutonia here. I've been experimenting a lot with Intosis Link PvP ships recently, uh, designed to get people to show up and fight. When you activate an Intosis Link on a station service, it sends an alliance-wide mail to the alliance that the station belongs to. I've been having quite a lot of success using a claw with an Intosis Link fitted. And for those of you who've had trouble finding fights, I would recommend giving this a try if you can afford the expense of the Intosis Link, which is currently sitting at around 27 million ISK in Jitter right now. Okay, so this is my claw fit. It's actually very similar to the claw fit that I used in the video that I did about a year ago for the claw. I have made a few changes due to the recent tyrosite and also I've pimped it out a bit more just because of the Intosis link fitted. So I've got in the high slots three 200mm auto cannons right here. Those are the highest tier auto cannons. Then we're using a restrained micro warp drive. The reason why we're using restrained is because of the recent tyrosite patch. It now has a reduced signature radius penalty on the micro warp drive. It's for 150% sig bloom instead of 50, uh, instead of 500%, which is 10% better. Then that combines really well with the claws interceptor bonus, which is 15% micro warp drive penalty reduction per level. So I have interceptors level five. That means that it's going to take off another 75% of the of the SIG Bloom penalty. So as you can see here, the signature radius bonus is actually uh, only doubling my SIG, just a bit more than double my SIG, which is very powerful. Uh, if, if you have a bit more trouble with fitting with power grid or CPU, you can use a compact micro warp drive instead. And if you don't have Interceptors 5, you can still definitely use this claw fit. Interceptors 5 is one of the most powerful skills in the game. It's very similar to Logistics 5 because of that Sig Bloom penalty. The difference between a 60% reduction and a 75% reduction is huge. But anyway, this is one of the reasons why I'm using the claw for this is because of the uh, very low signature radius while having high speed. Uh, by the way, there is a nerf coming out in the Ages patch, which will actually probably be when this video comes out, unfortunately. But if you offline the if you off, uh, offline the Intosis Link right now, it takes away the penalty. Although that's not going to be the case. Once Ages hits, you will have the uh, mass penalty included when you have the Intosis Link offline or online, just when it's fitted. Uh, Interceptors, unfortunately, don't have much grid, so it's very hard to have a mobile depot with an Intosis Link inside it while still having a competitive fit. And this is one of the reasons why I'm using the claw as well, is because it doesn't suffer as much, like the Tyrannis, if you're using the utility high, because the claw actually has quite a lot of grid left over, and CPU is not the is generally the limiting factor, and Intosis Link uses 10 grid, 1 CPU. And of course, the Raptor and the Crusader do not have utility highs, and a lot of the, uh, the other Interceptors are generally not so competitive when it comes to 1v1 and PvP and I think the claw is still very competitive without the uh, new or NOS in the utility high. Uh, for the scram it's just a J5B scrambler. There's quite a bit of CPU left so if you want to upgrade to a feint or use a, a different warp scrambler you're more than welcome to. I'm just going for the J5B because it's pretty much standard. I'm um, using a tech 2 damage control here and again uh, if you're having CPU difficulties fitting this ship, you can definitely just use a name damage control. The claw is, as I said, the claw, and that's one of the reasons I'm using it, is, is the claw does have really good fittings, especially if you're just using auto cannons. Uh, next up, I have a Jarrah Stabilizer 2. Then I have a small ancillary armor repairer. Uh, don't mind the uh, the capacitor here. If you're not running your micro drive, you can see it actually sustains for quite a long time. That's offline, but... You generally have enough cap to get off all your charges, and the claw actually has very good capacitor regeneration compared to the others to make up for the fact that it has the smallest uh, cap pool. Uh, on top of that, you've also got this plate here. Now, I'm using a Federation Navy 200mm steel plate, and the reason why I'm using that is because the Federation Navy steel plates has the lowest mass addition. You'll see here that it only adds uh, 67,500,000 fa uh, mass kilograms of mass to my ship that's because i have the uh, ma again i have the plate skill at five uh, without the plate skill it's going to be a, a bit worse but it won't make too much of a difference if you don't want to shell out for this this federation navy plate was about eight million isk when i last checked and well it's about nine million isk now but it's still uh, it's still fairly uh i think because of the fact that you're 
sacrificing your utility high you want to get more combat effectiveness and since the federation navy plate adds more than a tech 2 plate does while well, having the same like, grid requirements as tech 1 and also giving you lower mass than the, even the restrained plate i would definitely go with the federation navy plate uh, as i said the intosis link is quite expensive right now and you are losing combat effectiveness by sacrificing the a utility high so as you can see the util the intelligence link right now is just sitting above 28 million it may rise as we come to the ages patch as there may be some more demand for it or it, it could go down as well because more people might produce it in an anticipation but you know it's 28 million this right now so that's why i would recommend just shelling out a bit more for the federation navy plate but it, the fit works perfectly well if you use a restrained plate instead it has the same fitting requirements i believe and then i've just got a, a tech 2 burst area to rig and a small ambit extension rig if you want to save this you can forego the tech 2 rig but again this is not very expensive in jitter right now i think this is like 2 million isk no it's not even that it's like 1.2 so I definitely recommend you go for the, the Tech 2 small and then the Ambit. But going for two Tech 1 rigs is perfectly fine. Again, if you're having fitting problems, don't. it doesn't matter too much if you sacrifice the Ambit for a Power Grid rig, for example. And that, that's one of the reasons why, again, the Claw is very good. Uh, for ammo, I, I'm probably carrying too much here. I just carry 2k of everything. But to be honest, I think it takes me something like 20 minutes per stack to shoot all of this you can definitely sacrifice some space here it's not going to be enough to fit anything like a mobile depot but if you want to save a bit more money and, and save some space for something else then you can definitely use that and then we don't forget to take the strong this is what's taking up most of my space uh, your intensive link will use one strong per cycle and you have to use one for the warm-up cycle so at minimum you need at least two strongs two two strong units to be effective with this ship so just to go over the reasons why i chose the claw again is that it has the spare pg for the intosis link uh, it's an interceptor so it has the bubble immunity and the minus 75 percent signature radius bonus with micro warp drive on uh, the claw is still competitive while missing the utility high and it's fast enough to outrun it responses such as the orphus and tactical destroyers and enough mitigation with the speed and micro warp drive to avoid sniper sh ships like pizza or oracle sometimes people will just bring a, a slippery pea or something to a station to try and force you off and the claw has enough speed for it to be viable enough to still slingshot kiting ships and to avoid fire from those sniper ships like pizza that i mentioned uh, any ship that has a load of spare grid and doesn't benefit too much from a util utility high can still do really well with the strategy you can try something like a rail daredevil an imperial navy slicer or a dramiel with this and th those are just other good ship examples of ships you can use i prefer the claw though because of the sig reduction roll bonus and because of how engageable it is Okay, so let's just get started with the Intosis link. Uh, your primary targets for station service is probably going to be the fitting service first. If it's a mining system, you might want to go for the reprocessing service instead. But I think that's generally the best service that you might want to offline first of all. Because if you disable the fitting service, it prevents them from docking up and refitting their ships. Which is probably the most annoying thing for, for the, for the alliances that you're going to be fighting. So I'd recommend you do that. And it also prevents them like putting an Intosis link on a capital or some random ship that you can't kill. But anyway, you'll see here, this is my first kill that I got, which is with, the man which is with a Manticore. Now, this is actually a Manticore that costs close to 500 million isk. And this is one of the reasons why I'm using the Claw, is because a lot of people consider Troll Scepters to be weak for some reason, or them to be like a, a troll or something like that. I'm not quite sure, but they're really underestimated and this is probably why I'd use it this is why one of the reasons why I'd use a claw instead of using uh, something like a Dramio or Imperial Navy Slicer claws are pretty well not uh, they're not well respected I, I don't think and also the fact that uh, you, since you're a troll scepter as well in a sense uh, people get pretty mad and they're willing to to just uncloak something like this which has absolutely no chance of killing you and that manticore actually had polarized torps as well as the metaphor ballistic control units a republic fleet uh point while also having uh, <laughs> a civilian afterburner so that was a, a nice kill 
This next fight isn't really a super amazing complex fight, but it just, just shows you how much people underestimate troll scepters and how annoying they are and how good they are at getting fights. So this is Theron warps to a station and he sees me in Tosising the fitting service, so he comes in and attacks me. Uh, he does actually have a relic analyzer fitted as well, so this is an exploration Astero that's you know got a scram, which is pretty standard, I guess, for an Astero. I offline my thing for a bit more mass and agility, and I just go in on this Astero. It's not particularly a great fit, and as you can see, he's even in armor. He's got armor damage, and he's willing to fight me. Uh, a Tengu undocks at this point as well, but it's... Uh, way too late and the Astero dies pretty quickly. Uh, the Claw is actually really strong and a lot of people underestimate it. Uh, with the 200mm uh, plate you have a lot of uh, armor buffer, you also have an ancillary ar uh, armor rep as well and you can get off most of the charges on, on your cap and the plate gives you enough time to regen cap to get off the other charges if you are having cap difficulties. And you can see what else they're bringing to the station here and I'm able to just burn away Unfortunately, I made a uh, mistake at a late point of the fight, and I didn't actually record this, but I managed to separate the Maldiction, but they warped in a load of stuff to it. I was able to still kill the Maldiction, though. Uh, the Rapier really caught me off guard, and he ended up warping away and warping back to a fleet mate. And that's what, kind of what killed me. I was pretty close to escaping, too, because of the... If you look at the cycle of the Entosis link, uh, I probably shouldn't... I suppose it just kept burning and not risk myself on the Maldiction, but I did kill the Maldiction, uh, despite what they had. So... It was a effective trade, killing an Astero and the Maldiction, I believe. Uh, my claw does cost around 50 million is, but killing the Astero is definitely worth it. And I just want to show you this next, uh, well, few fights in just like the next five minutes, just to show you sort of what happens, uh, how I get kills in the Intosis Link Interceptor. So in this case, uh, what I've done is I went to a busy mining system, uh, YO Dash, which is a, a busy bastion dead end mining system. As soon as I entered, a lot of miners docked up, uh, or they went to a POS or logged off. So I couldn't really do anything about them, so I decided that I'm going to go and Intosis their uh, re reprocessing service, which is a great way to get people to cry and get mad. As you can see, this is still the warm-up cycle, so it hasn't actually begun capturing it. They haven't actually got a, uh, an alliance-wide mail yet saying that I'm capturing the reprocessing service. But there is a harpy that's on grid at 200 kilometers away who's probably reporting me doing it. So the uh, the Harpy warps down now, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look at the Harpy to see how he's fit. Well, I will do eventually. Yeah, here we go. And that's just to see if he's blasters or rails. So in this case, the Harpy's actually uh, blasters, I believe. So I know that I can't really engage him. If it was a rail Harpy, I could probably take him on uh, in Scrambling Chair. Those are neutron blasters. So I'm just going to move away from the Harpy, but this Harpy actually only has an afterburner fitted. So uh, he's actually almost in no threat to me, and if I wasn't... Uh, I could actually almost orbit the service while waiting for him to... Uh, while just burning around him. But anyway, he's coming out a bit, and some more stuff is coming uh, here, as you can see. So we have a, a claw and a jaguar that's just came on grid now, and I really want to kill that claw. Especially in a 1v1, and especially as you can see here, the claw is moving at 5 kilometers a second, and I don't, that's not heated. So I, I know that he's got like two speed mods fit or something like that, so I know it's going to be a bad fit uh, for 1v1, and the claw only has two mids as well, so he won't be able to control me very well. You can see here I uh, get the scrap on him, I'm just overheating uh, fusion on him. The reason why we're using fusion against the claw is obviously it's going to be armor tanked. <laughs> There's no way you can do a shield tank claw unless you forego tackle or speed mod or something. And my prediction was right based on his speed of uh, one point uh, five point two kilometers a second. He was uh, very didn't have much tank at all. It had two speed mods fitted. You can see here there's a confession jagger on grid that I just left burning after me without being able to do anything because I was able to take out that claw out of position. And the whole fight, what I was doing, I was watching the confessor's ranges and the jagger's range, and I made sure I started the fight within one hundred fifty kilometers so they couldn't fleet warp to him. And that's very important. So as you can see, there's uh, two Confessor and Jag on here. What I'm doing is just uh, repairing my stuff. I'm just waiting to see if they're going to bring any other interceptors out. If not, uh, they can they can bring they can just sit their T3Ds on the station and you know look almighty. And I'm just going to warp off to another system. So which is what I'm going to do. So this is just pretty basic interceptor stuff. You show up, you be annoying. When they bring too many toys or tactical destroyers, you just 
leave and go to another system and you'd be ignoring and this is kind of what i'm just doing with the entosis link go up to a, a station start capturing it make them show up and defend it even if it is like bring just a sweeper on an orthrus on grid or whatever and then i just warp away and uh, there's a bit of uh, a bit of salt in local there i, I really like that copy pasta it's pretty fun uh the jaguar ran for me in 1v1 earlier it's like in a triple overdrive fit or something because it goes like three kilometers a second so anyway, I'm just like kind of just going back to the old system that I was in where I killed that Manticore now. <coughs> so just using the map, I know where it is. Just trying to find like another uh, empty system. And uh, good targets for Intosis links tend to be just systems that have like four or five people in local. Or just lo low local amounts, or they're just non-PVP style players, like miners, just because generally they're going to make more mistakes when fighting you, and sending out the Alliance wide mail is a great way to get a load of uh, people to attack you. So I see here, there's just a Manticore that's decloaked, so, you know, this is a perfect kind of target, and this is one of the reasons why Claw is so good as well. As you know, the Jaguar is following me, and the Jaguar is right behind me, but I'm able to get on top of this uh, Manticore, who's just AFK or something, then maybe start killing him. As you can see, the Jaguar lands now, but because of the claws, like high warp speed, and also because of my high uh, NWD speed right now, you'll see here that I'm just gonna NWD away from the Jaguar before he's even able to uh, be a threat to me. Confessor lands now, and this is just sort of just typical interceptor stuff, you know, just being able to warp so fast and burn so fast, you can escape even from people who are hunting you with. Uh, Dictors and Confessor and Jaguar and you can see here they're all pretty mad and they're chasing me and this is just basically just mission accomplished this is basically just what you're doing you're just warping around finding targets in toasting stations if there are no targets and just being annoying as possible so here's just some more standard interceptor stuff so i actually captured the fitting service on this station and people are pretty mad and this eris actually has an entosis link fitted you can't see the effect because i have the effects turned off but you see there's a caracal guarding it a rapid cancer caracal which actually warps off and because he warps in the direction of the belt that i actually came from i decide to burn towards the eris at this point and the reason why i do this is because i i'm trying to think what the caracal is doing and in my mind what the caracal is going to do is he's going to warp to the belt and he's going to warp back at the station at 100 because that's what i did so he can be on top of me and try and kill me and th what that's going to do is it's going to leave the eris open and uh, normally there's like a lack of communication between some players so i can just burn for the eris right now and i'm going to attack him and even if the caracal warps back to the eris there can sometimes be a lack of communication and as you can see the caracal warps as i predicted minus 100 kilometers to go where i am so the eris engages me and i'm able to kill him while the caracal is left at 100 and cannot do anything so I just got a free Eris kill just by predicting what the Caracal wanted to do. And the Caracal actually is able to warp quite close to me. I guess he had a bookmark or he warped to the station at uh, like a range or something like that. But I'm able to burn away from him and I'm at no threat of dying. Especially because the Chlory is so fast. Even though the Caracal has uh, rapid cancer like missiles. Oh yeah, and as soon as I realised that the... Uh... Eris had an Intosis link fitted. I decided to be the master looter and uh, loot that Intosis link. I jetted my uh, my Strun in space and decided to just loot his uh, Intosis link and then escape. As you can see, this is the master crabbing tactics that you must learn to be super successful at solo crab PvP. So again, this is just a bit of a longer clip just to show you how mad people get when you're in Tosis stations and just uh, how fun it is uh, to play around in local. So I was capturing this uh, fitting service in a system with three people uh, in local just to send a mail and see if any of the three players that were in here would come out and fight, which they didn't, but they did call over a sentinel. So as soon as a sentinel lands, obviously I'm going to burn away because I'm not going to fight a sentinel in a claw. The only way I can really win against the sentinel is if it is like uh, a micro warp drive fit and I land on top of it at zero and I can just like approach it and kill it at kill it at like 500 meters that's generally my idea unfortunately this sentinel has an afterburner fitted and one of the reasons why i burned away from it instead of approaching it is just to check what propulsion it had so this guy's in like a master like super unengageable bait fit that i can't fight and uh he's uh pretty mad in local as you can see uh 
and this is the the, the 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 real benefit of flying uh the real benefit of flying troll scepters is how mad people get especially when you just leave when they bring uh stuff that's obviously super unengageable so i tell them to fit a micro warp drive and i'll fight him and we're just waiting around to see what's going to happen. Whenever someone does this to you, like they bring a sentinel, it's obviously just going to afterburn around the fitting services so you can't do anything. You can just burn away and, uh, yeah, you can chat with them in local a bit as well. And uh, hopefully what they'll do is they'll bring an interceptor because they know they have absolutely no chance of catching you and killing you. And you're just going to peace out and then you're just going to go to another system and you're going to interceptor another station service and then they're going to have to keep following you around if they want to disrupt you. So anyway, we're just kind of hanging around here. As you can see, local has actually got up by two, uh, including the uh, Sentinel pilot, which was the third pilot that came into local. So we're just mostly just hanging around, waiting for things to happen. I do recognise one of the characters in local as a Sabre pilot, but it's not actually coming to the station for some reason. I guess uh, it would rather gate camp for me for some reason, and there's probably like some dude sitting on a gate somewhere. But luckily enough... Um, one good, f one tactic that I would recommend is using Eurotosis Link in systems that have more than two gates. So they, there's always like a, they can't just like camp you in or something like that, which often happens. And so even if they do camp you in, um, picking a pocket with a lot of stations is a good idea because then even if they do camp you in, you can just keep disrupting their station services. If they just want to do the, the like typical uh, providence like jump bridge bubble camp stuff and they never fight you in the systems they only wait on the in gate for you so as you can see a raptor has now shown up a raptor is definitely something that i can kill obviously what i really want to do is i want to engage the raptor at a distance where the sentinel cannot warp to it so i actually make a bit of a mistake here initially or the raptor kind of baits me as you can see sort of burning away from the station rather than burning towards me and he, he's doing that because he wants the sentinel to warp to him and protect him because obviously I can't fight the sentinel. So what I'm doing now, right now is I'm burning slowly back towards the station because what I want to do is I want to slingshot him but at the same time I also want to make sure that the sentinel cannot warp to the raptor. So as you can see I do get a successful slingshot but then the uh, sentinel warps to the raptor so I just burn away again. And this is just a, a nice uh, a nice example of uh, reacting to the situation. And that's definitely something you need to keep an eye out for. Especially that Raptor pilot was doing the smart thing where he was like coasting around the station to try and make sure that the Sentinel could warp to him. I'm not sure if he was doing that deliberately or not, but uh, it was a very good piloting, pi good piloting from the Raptor in this case, especially as uh, a real Raptor doesn't really have much chance of killing a claw because... Uh, um, I can slingshot him very easily. The, the claw is actually faster than the Raptor, even with a 200mm plate, and even with the Intosis online, it was actually offline in this case, and that's not going to apply after the Aegis patch, as I mentioned before. This is not a tactic you can use anymore, but still, uh, the claw is still very good at slingshotting targets, because it still moves uh, just slower than 3.6km a second with the Intosis link fitted, so it's still fast enough. So. I did actually warp out at this point and I was sort of debating moving on because of the Sentinel. It's going to be really hard for me to get a fight. Uh, but as you can see, the Raptor actually lands on the gate with me and he's still aggressed. I know he's still aggressed because uh, of my timer at the top and he actually just <laughs> fights me at zero, which is uh, kind of amazing. I know if the Sentinel was in warp to the gate at this point, because it was a, I believe it was a 70 AU warp, it was a pretty long warp. I know that the Sentinel only warps at 5.5, whereas the Raptor warps at 8 seconds, so there's definitely enough of a, a gap for me to be able to kill this Raptor and just leave. I checked the directional scanner as well, and since the, the Sentinel was not on directional scanner, I just went for the Raptor at zero and killed him. And this is just a, another typical interceptor thing, and taking advantage of mistakes, especially in warp speed, because, you know, obviously the, the Sentinel is like 100 AU away, or 70 AU away, so it's going to take him like 15 sec 50 seconds to respond. Well, not quite 50 seconds, but like at least half a minute before he can be on grid and doing something. So how much do people hate Troll Scepters, and how annoying are they, and how good are Intosis Links at getting you fights? So in this system, uh, I noticed that there was a Raptor and a Crow sort of following me around, and I'll just check the local as soon as the Raptor <laughs> disrupted me. It went up by almost 20 people. And uh, 
yeah, this is uh, why the Intosis link is super fun. So there was like 20 dudes in system in interceptors and frigates. And uh, as you can see, this is 10 minutes later. So they're still in system. They're still looking for me. And I decided that I'm going to warp. Luckily, I made a few spots uh, in the system beforehand. So warp to a bookmark. And this is a good thing about Intosising uh, systems that have uh, lots of gates because it's much easier to escape from. And even though they have... Uh, about 15 interceptors and frigates in the system right now that are actually actively hunting me. Uh, I noticed that there's only a crow on this gate by walking to a bookmark and using the uh, directional scan. They're mostly just sat on one gate instead of spread around. So what I'm hoping to do is hoping to maybe kill the crow if it chases me too far. Or... And uh, luckily I know the geography quite well of this area is that I can go to this system and go to another system. So this gate that I'm in warp to right now is the gate that they were all sitting on. And since it's only like a short warp, I should be able to e escape from them. But just check local. This is this is the troll scepter. This is the the thing that's so awesome about troll scepters is just look at that local. Just how mad this makes sort of holding alliances and how many fights this this can get you. And uh, just plotting my route, and uh, as you can see, uh, we can make uh, a very good escape, especially because of this 77 AU warp is going to separate a lot of the frigates. Fortunately, I wasn't able to get any kills because they're all moving at, uh, they're all moving pretty close together, and they didn't follow me uh, past a certain point. They all stayed as a group. As you can see, I'm just sort of just planning it out and looking to see if there's any like areas that are going to be super camped or not like if they were leaving some people uh, like more forward but again this is just the intosis link and why it's so incredible on an interceptor like a troll scepter is just just look at local <laughs> but this is the this is the one of some of the most fun i've ever had just because of how many fights you can get with this intosis link and how mad people get If you do have the money to try it out, because after all the Intosis link is kind of expensive and the the plate's a bit more optional, but I definitely would recommend you fit a more expensive plate to make up for the lack of the lower combat effectiveness you have from losing your utility high. It's definitely worth a try and you can have a lot of fun with this, especially if you're someone who's been struggling to find fights. I would definitely recommend the trying out an Intosis Link Claw if uh, losing a 50 to 60 million isk interceptor is in your budget. It's definitely uh, super cool and uh, it's just great for... F I've just been f having a, a blast doing it and it's great for finding fights. Especially good at getting fights from people who would normally not fight you. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. I really love Troll Scepter.